everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. In the crazy world of acrylic pouring, we've learned to look at everyday items as new painting tools. Practically nothing in our kitchen or garage is safe anymore. With that thinking in mind, when I wanted to make a piece that had a few stretched ring pours running alongside each other, well, I went looking around my house and I saw this old pill box. It seems just perfect for what I want to do. At least I hope so. <laughs> so let's see what happens. My color palette for this piece is going to be pretty simple. Just four colors on my white negative space. And since it's going to be that simple, I'm going to try two neons for the first time. So I'm going to be using Ultra Blue Deep, the Neon Electric Blue, Bahama Blue, and the Neon Thermal Green. Again, in white, titanium white, negative space. Alrighty, let's do this. To make it easy for me to maneuver this little pillbox, I've gone ahead and taped it to a sort of cake spreader spatula type thing so that I have really good control and uh, the ability to be very precise in my movements. I'm only going to use the first six compartments because I don't want too wide of a ribbon, I don't think. So I'm going to just fill in each of these, not necessarily the same in every compartment. So what I like about the Ultra Blue Deep is it's going to be my good contrast color. I'm hoping that this is dark enough of a color. If I find when I do the pour that I do need more contrast, I can still add little specks of black here and there. Now the advantage to a somewhat monochromatic pour is that you need not worry about mud happening because it can't. No, no combination of these colors can make mud. So I can pour the colors into my little compartments in any order I like without having to be afraid that I'm going to get an ugly color when the colors blend. I want to make sure that all the compartments are about the same height of fullness before I tip them so that they all the paint comes out at the same rate. Like, I don't think I'd want one compartment to start pouring paint before another one. I don't know, maybe it won't matter, but we'll see. And now I want to pour out a very thin white layer of paint. Now for this piece, I'd like some lacing on the periphery of the pour while maintaining a more marbled look in the pour area. So I didn't add any silicone to this paint or this white paint that I'm going to put down for my first white layer. All the paint, including the white, was thinned the same. One part paint, two, three parts pouring medium. Again, I just want a thin coat so that the pour has an easy time flowing. Okay, let's see. I imagine that this is going to dribble down the side because there is no spout on, you know, in these compartments. So this is going to be something. All right, try to get them to come out at the same rate. Now they're running out. So let's see, how about I let the dots come out? That's kind of fun. Huh, I like the little dots. Huh, I like those a lot. That's different. I've certainly never seen anything that looks like this before when I've poured. So, what do we do with this now? <laughs> oh. I really dig these. I think these are very fun. They're just like, each one's like a little pretty little individual experience. Right, let's tilt this off. Hope then these are gonna change. <clears throat> Do I want those to change? That's a good question. These look like sea creatures to me. Like some kind of weird squid thing. <laughs> Now, it's interesting, all the cells, remember there's no silicone in anything yet. 
Um, so any of the cells happening is due to the pouring medium. The pouring medium has a tendency to promote cells, so that's why we're seeing little tiny cells happening. You know, you can kind of see some through there. That's due to the pouring medium. How about a little tilting this way? Um, let's see. A little motion that way. And I don't want it to fall off the side a little here. That's maybe enough. See, what's interesting is that this looks like some kind of weird cell thing happening, which is kind of cool. These look like big old cells <laughs> with some great white lacing. And that's not what happened. You saw how these got made. So this is like a really fun way of sort of cheating and making cells. <laughs> All right, I really want to play with some blowing and some other lacing. See, this is so cool. I wasn't expecting this, so this is totally messing with my plan. <laughs> I had this vision of blowing tendrils out this way and la la la. And see, and, and, and I still want to do that, but I, 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 I dig this. Urgh. I'm going to pause and ponder for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to live into my plan just a little bit, just to see what happens. So what I had intended to do, and now I'm all on the fence about, was to add some white here that has silicone. So that's what this is. Same white paint, except that I've added silicone to this because what I want is to blow into it, and then hopefully, because it has silicone, lacing should happen. Sometimes that works. Let's see. So I'm gonna do it at least here. So I'm just putting down some here, and I guess some in here. Let's see. And now I'm going to take my fish tank tubing and I'm just going to blow. All right, I'm going to go through this one. I'm okay with losing one. I like it here. Let's try a little in this corner. Not so much with the lacing. It's a little disappointing. See, I like the ripped fabric look here. I'm not getting that over there. So, I'm thinking I'm going to take some of that off and try again. Because that's what I want. <laughs> I want this look over here too. There we go. Much, much, much better. <laughs> so in order to get that look, you need a lot of paint in front to blow into. If it's, a, if it's not enough paint, the paint's just gonna crash and stall. I'm gonna do this manually because I don't wanna mess with these. So I'm going to do this with a stick instead. 
I don't think I'm ever going to not like tendrils. I'm just never going to not like them. <laughs> they just always make me happy. Yeah, I love this so much. This, this was where I blew out one of them. I'm not loving that. That looks somehow disjointed. So, I'm going to take some dark paint, try to connect this patch to that patch, see if I can do a little something something for that. Oh, that might be too long. Yeah, that's too long. We need to do some corrective surgery here. All gone. If you don't like it, take it out. It does not need to stay. You are the boss of the painting. If something in it doesn't make you happy, get rid of it. No need to look at something and say, oh, I wish it was another way. If you wish it was another way, make it the other way. Don't settle. See, that's selling a little. That's lacing. And there's a little hint of it there and there, but what I'm thinking is that the first white layer is just competing and holding on and preventing the lacing that I'd wanted. Like I said, I've got this ridge of paint here that's got to go. I'm thinking bringing some of the white in might be interesting, like that. Not a heck of a lot, just in some places. And for this, I have to make sure to wipe after every pass so that I don't contaminate the white when I put the stick back in. Ooh, I like this. That's cool. I am loving this. I mean, not just because it's tendrils and, you know, it's a tendril, so I'm going to like it, but I just like this sort of double-sided thing. Okay, I don't like this point here, though. So... Gonna put a blob of white. Take care of that. All right, much better. Yeah, it makes this feel more organic somehow. Sort of breaking up these lines by sending in some white tendrils. I'm digging this. <laughs> I just do. Bland patches like that. I don't know. I just. Don't do it for me. So, I like to do something about them. Do some little drops in here. Just do one in here. Okay, something over here. All I'm doing is scooping up paint and letting it drip off the stick. That's all. Scooping up some of the runoff. This is feeling a little too round. So I'm just changing that up a little bit. Something to that. I think I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn it around, see what it looks like the other way. So I think I'm going to like it better this way. Yeah. I think I do. And that's probably a product of our 
being a left to right society. <laughs> I like the action going from year to year. If we read this way, we might like it better the other way, but I kind of like it this way. In my head, I was, when I was looking at it the other way, I suspected that once I turned it around, I would like it this way. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I have a little bit of a ridge here, is smooth that out, let that run over the end so that it dries better. So I don't have like a bump where the paint settled. I think this looks good. Good. It's cool. It's different. And I like it. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop here, let this dry, and hope that it doesn't change too much. I know there's still some movement here because the paint is really thick. I keep trying to scoop some off periodically, but part of the issue too is I'm working on a canvas panel so it's bowed a little bit because of all the moisture on top. I wet the back first, that wasn't enough. So it's just bowed a little bit, but it's just enough to let some paint pool along here. I fixed it over here. Here, I'm gonna babysit it a little longer and then put it to bed. And then we'll see what this looks like dry crossing my fingers at not too much changes. Okay, the lesson for today, don't fall in love with your initial design plan so much that you marry it. <laughs> Take it out on a date. Have a nice dinner with it, but don't marry it. Because an unexpected and maybe more awesome plan might come along and you want to be free to explore that. To see if that new plan is your soulmate <laughs> for that particular piece. If I had been locked into my initial plan so much, I would never have gotten this cool piece. So let yourself go off in weird directions. Try crazy things just to see what happens. You'll learn a lot. You'll make things you never dreamed possible and probably have more fun creating too. I hope you got something out of this. Tell me in the comments, share, and if you can, Help me out by using any of my Amazon links when you do some shopping there. I would really appreciate it. As always, thank you for spending time with me. Go let your creative nature shine. See you later. Bye now.